All right. Hello, hello. Another new user announcement, another new ecosystem member. Um, very excited to have Chris from Orkney Laura here. Um, real fast, Chris, tell us about the um the interesting name, Orkney Laura. I'm I I'll be completely honest. I used to think I was good at geography, but I had no idea Orkney Island existed, and I thought it was something like as a Lord of the Rings fan, I thought it was something to do with like orcs from Lord of the Rings at first. And um, someone from the UK I work with actually explained that Orkney Island was a thing. So you're based on, um, well, actually don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but tell us a little bit about yourself, your role and like, um, you know, how, what you're doing on Orkney Island. Yeah. So, um, so I live on, so Orkney is an archipelago, a group of islands, and okay. I live on, uh, the most northerly of those which um that's in the background of my uh, meeting here uh, yeah. that's called north ronaldsey um and yeah so i i came um sort of across helium um and uh sort of uh, decided that there was a, a business opportunity in the IOD, in iot industry uh so uh, so yeah, I started a company, um, and I named it after the place where I live, Orkney. Um, and then the Laura is for Laura Wan. Um, so as simple as that. So uh, <laughs> yeah. and uh, it's a, appeals to the locals. Uh, you know, a nice new tech company springing up in an unusual spot. Absolutely. Um, and we're quite lucky that we've got a reasonable internet connection here, so we can run an uh, internet-based business. Yeah. So what is it that Orkney Laura does out there? Yeah. So uh, we're, what we're trying to do is, uh, or what we have done is um, create uh, an app um, and a way for a way to make IoT devices sort of accessible to everyone and make it easy to adopt and deploy uh, these cool little devices. Um, and Helium is a great enabler of that because uh, of the great sort of the massive network coverage. Um, so uh, what we've done is create uh, an app which um, is simple, easy to use. And we're, we've sort of built like an all-in-one service. So you'd buy a data package from us um, and literally switch your device on and it's there the devices are showing on the dashboard straight away to use so we're taking away the technical sort of knowledge um part of that so people can just buy iot devices uh, come to us as like a service provider um to provide a way to visualize and use the data and interact with the devices um, gotcha. so i guess you call us like a systems integrator integrating helium network and software platforms yeah yeah cool no i I mean, we have a lot of people talking about like taking kind of that, like you said, that technical aspect out of it a little bit, making it a little bit more plug and play. And I mean, I think that's super important because it's it's tough to get started with IoT and LoRaWAN sometimes if you don't have a real technical background, you know. Um, yes. So making it simpler for people to get going and up and running, I think is really important. Yeah, well, that's what I found myself when I first sort of uh, discovered the um, helium and the lower iron industry um you know i bought a couple of devices to play with and i thought well it's not as simple as just buying it and turning it on uh it, there's a lot more steps in between and yeah. drawing from my uh, my background is mainly sort of uh, retail and customer service so drawing from my experiences on that i realized that this isn't going to appeal to the mass consumer or even to small businesses who just want to buy their soil sensors and put them in the field and that's it. Um, they don't want to be programming and writing decoders and things. So, um, so yeah, so I teamed up with uh, a chap on the island who uh, is a coder and we Perfect. started Orkney Laura and, and off we went, yeah. Awesome, awesome. How long ago was the company created? How long ago did you do this? Um, so I sort of started working on the idea about two years ago um but we're relative as an actual company that's been trading we're quite new so we only incorporated the company back in march this year oh um, wow so so yeah so very new um, um but we've got a, a service up and running and we've got a few customers um and we're continuing improving and and growing with growing with the network sort of thing yeah. yeah no that's awesome congratulations on that you know that's since march that's not too long so um yeah yeah it's yeah. exciting um 
So let's talk to me a little bit about how you started using helium and you talked about like massive coverage, you know, and things like that and the growing coverage um, out there in kind of a remote part of the world a little bit like what made you go with helium, you know, I mean, as opposed to something else. Yeah, so, so where we live, this little island is a perfect example of where um, sort of uh, helium works so, so well is um, myself and, and a couple of neighbours uh, bought some helium hotspots and it was more or less plug and play. And all of a sudden, our little remote island in the middle of the, in between the Atlantic and North Sea had a Laurel Wan network. Um, and, uh, and then sort of, yeah, we were just like, well, what can we do with this? And we realised that uh, um, that somewhere like here, where, although you can see in the background here, there is a sailor mast on the island. It doesn't yeah. provide any, ironically, it doesn't provide any coverage to us. It just points <laughs> out further north to sea. Um, and there's, there's very poor phone signal coverage here. And though we've got reasonable Wi-Fi now uh, in the houses, mm. um, actually put something uh, you sort of adopt this sort of technology out in the rural parts of the island it's quite difficult um but this he, you know helium and lower one uh offer a sim a relatively sort of simple and easy way to provide network coverage so we've got a sort of a demonstration we've in one of the um some of the ponds they've been making um shallow ponds for wader birds to help um uh, to encourage the wildlife and uh, and because some of the uh, the ponds and that have sort of dried up over time so yeah uh, the RSPB which is a bird charity uh, protection charity in UK they've made new ponds and then we're demonstrating that we can now monitor the water level of these ponds uh, with a sensor you know uh, put a sensor on the post and you know before that sort of um, solution wouldn't have been possible so and then yeah. helium but for the business side of it, Helium opens our, you know, we've got customers or we can have customers from anywhere in the world, in theory, um, with the Helium's sort of massive coverage. Uh, our, we've got customers in the USA and Slovakia and oh. one in Australia and then several in the UK. So, and we're all, and we're running that business from a little island, you know, up in in the north of scotland so it's amazing yeah. yeah yeah no that's that is really cool to hear i didn't realize in australia that's like you know the other side of the world from you on a little yeah. island like you said yeah yeah, that's yeah. Cool. <laughs> um I, you see so you talked about like measuring the water level and ponds you know i mean that's something that we've kind of talked about on socials a little bit for helping the local wildlife and things like that um which i think is awesome you know we love to hear those stories about how you know, helium's helping enable these use cases that's helping the planet and, you know, all those types of things. Are there any other notable use cases you, you know, want to brag about a little bit other than that? I know, you know, since March, it, you're fairly new, but I'm sure you have. Yeah. A, huh? yeah. Well, we've got some um, different demonstration projects in the works. Um, so we're being supported by um, Highlands Islands Enterprise, which is a local sort of enabler of businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, new businesses here and um they've helped us to uh to help um they've helped us with um getting these demonstration projects set up so we work so one of them is the ponds and we're demonstrating uh water you know level sensors for measuring water depth uh, out in the middle of nowhere yeah. um another one we're going to be starting soon is um so the local trust on the island here have uh, a fleet of hire bikes so tourists that come hire bicycles um, and they tend to get sort of uh, left dotted around the island and we have to go hunting around looking for them. So uh, a great um, cost effective uh, solution there is GPS trackers, which we're going to attach to every bike. Um, and linked to that, they've got a lovely new um, sh storage shed. Um, but the winds can get very high here. All the locals know that to keep the doors shut. Um, <laughs> but vis visitors necessarily don't. Um, and so to save the shed, a simple door and window sensor on, on the new shed door lets the um, trust know if the door has been left open and they can go and save the shed before it's too late. Yeah. Um, and uh, another one is uh, we're going to demonstrate, uh, oh, yeah, the, there's a local uh, bird observatory. So it's a local business that has, um, it's like hospitality. It's got a restaurant and uh, rooms. Um, and they've, they're trying out some uh 
sensors for their fridges and freezers. So reducing the time it takes them going around taking uh, temperature readings and things like that. Yeah. And and all of this it doesn't require any elaborate sort of setups of Wi-Fi networks in the property. There is lower one helium coverage here. We can literally just pop the sensor in the freezer and away you go. Yeah. No, I think it's really cool that, you know, you're in somewhere remote, but you're kind of using, you know, like you talked about the winds and stuff, you're kind of taking advantage of like those things that are hyper local to you and using helium to create solutions for those types of things that, you know, might only occur out there in Orkney Island or something. So that that's interesting, you know, um, let's see, are you now, I, I don't know a ton about Orkney Laura, obviously, because you're brand new. Are you more B2B, B2C or both? Like, can, you know, just the average person like me get in touch with you and, you know, get something up and running? Or is it more like looking for local businesses and businesses around the world? Uh, no, it's, um, we're definitely aiming at the, uh, I would say the wider potential audience of, of this type of technology. So we're, we're B2, B2C and B2B. Okay. But our, our target business customers would be smaller businesses, uh, gotcha. like the local bird observatory, you know, they're a small business. Um, so, uh, but they, they won't have an IT department. They're just, a, their main job is uh, monitoring, uh, providing a, a bed and breakfast and restaurants and uh, bird counting. You know, <laughs> they're not going to have an IT yeah. department to set up an IoT system for them. Um, yeah. and, you know, and that's where we come in. We take, uh, they can either buy the devices from us um, and then we set it up as a complete solution or we've, several of our customers have already got the devices and they just come to us for a solution for using the device and the data it produces. Um, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so um, I would say we're both, we're both, but on the business side, we'd be centering more to smaller businesses. Gotcha. How can people get in touch with you at Orkney Laura if they want to learn a little bit more, they want to get started, you know, something like that? Yep. So the best way is uh, visit our website. So it's uh, simply orkneylaura.co.uk. Okay. Um, we've got a Facebook page and uh, we've got Twitter now, so you can contact us there. Um, um, and then we've also got a landing page and a product page uh, on Cowchip's website now as well. So oh, they're supporting okay. us as well. Yeah. So sorry, little name drop there. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's good. I mean, our community knows Calchip, so they'll know where to go. With, yeah, they can find yeah. you for sure. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, are You're going to come up on the uplink in a couple of weeks now, I believe August 11th. So you're going to do, you know, a little bit more of a deep dive into some use cases and demos and things like that. Is there anything you can kind of tease the community a little bit, you know, get them excited? Yeah, um, yeah. So uh, I, I'm going to put together a presentation, and we'll show, we'll do um, a screen share, and we'll show exactly how all the different features are available on our app, um, and show some of those off. Um, and and uh, yeah, the, basically we'll we'll go into a bit more detail and just show what how our app works. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. No, I'm excited it. for that. Yeah. All right, um, Chris, this has been awesome. Again, super excited to have Orkney Laura as part of the Helium ecosystem. Um, and again, on the uplink August 11th. So if anyone wants to tune in and hear from Chris a little bit more about Orkney Laura and the different use cases, applications they're doing with Helium, tune in. We'll have registration up soon. All right. Thank you very much, Chris. Nice. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much. All right. Cheers. Bye. Bye.